Hello, I'm Tammy Walker, window washer at Boxy Queens, and let me show you how I made my swamp diorama. I'm going with the scale of 1 60th for my abandoned USA diecast diorama set. And this one will be just great to add a little swamp portion into it. I'm going to draw out my building dimensions and get it all set up and put a little crooked onto my blue foam base. I've just gotten a hot wire cutter out and I'm just going to start cutting out the sections I need for my swamp. And remember safety first, good ventilation and, and all of that wonderful stuff to keep yourself healthy. And this should be a time lapse, but I don't know if it'll come through when my video's done. <laughs> so I'm just slowly carving out everywhere what I need. And I'm going to take my wood file, it's like a wood rasp, and smooth out any sharp edges. I decided I would just gently glue this to a piece of glass while I put the plaster on and it dries so it doesn't bow up the foam. Usually you can make your base first, but since these all slide together into one diorama, I'm really not needing to make any edges or base for them. So I'm taping it down and putting it securely on and uh, gonna let that dry. And now I'm gonna start working on the balsa wood house. And I've got my balsa wood out. I decided I was just gonna make little slats and make them look weathered and old. And I'm starting out making one of the walls. And so I'm cutting all the slats equally and putting them into the walls as the stud poles or the stud post. <laughs> you could be more productive just by cutting everything out at once and just gluing it together. But I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna do and I just slowly pieced it together. And uh, I've taken a piece of balsa wood and I took a sharp pencil and I drew all over it to represent grain of the wood. So when I cut that up for my siding, it'll give it a more realistic look. And as you can see, I've got my walls in and I'm starting to work on my siding. And at first I did long pieces and then I realized that wasn't realistic. So I went ahead and cut them into shorter pieces and put them across. And I also shaved the edges off a little. So it does look a little more worn and aged. The house is looking pretty good so far. I added a little pitched air to it. I've made sure I had studs behind the broken out sections. Got my doll, uh, doors and walls and our windows framed in. <laughs> and really quick, I take a side step and I put a first little layer of plaster on in the middle there. Let that dry. I'll come back to that later. And back to the house again. You can see my windows are posted in there. And I started to put siding on it. It's pretty simple. It was a lot of fun to do. And I've used a watered down black acrylic to start painting it to see what it looked like. And it looked nice and old and aged. This was such a simple and easy effect. Back to the plaster again, sanding it down and putting another coat on it. And I have to wait and wait for it to dry because I'll be doing the roof to the house last. I'm always waiting for something to dry. So I guess I can work on my windows. I just took some plastic out and measured them and then glued them into each one of the little window areas. I guess I'll make some doors too for it while I'm at it. I just drew some lines down the little piece of balsa wood, glued it in, and I made a little handle for the door and glued that on too. And back to the base again, I've got my little pallet knife out and I'm just smoothing down the rest of the areas that needed some joint compound. And next I'm just going to sand that up to make sure it's all nice and, nice and smooth and dust it off. Paint it up with gesso, which is a surface preparation, and let that dry too. I'm going to position my house to where I want it, use a pencil to draw it out, and use my knife and start digging out a groove so it actually sits more into the diorama. And when I've got all cut out, I'm going to fill it all with the plaster and set the house into the plaster where it'll dry. And it'll look just a little crooked into the swamp. It fits nicely in there. 
And now I've got some new brown paints. So I'm going to go ahead and paint everything with this brown. It'll probably take two or three coats. And I have to wait for that to dry too. And when that joint compound dries around the house, I will paint that too. So now I'm going to make the chimney. I just used a piece of regular white foam and um, took a sharp pencil and drew all the stones all over it. What I'll do is paint it all black and then use a dry brush method with some grays to look like the stones are in there. It was looking a little too crisp, so I took my fingernail and clipped off the edges of the stones and pulled out some areas to make it look like the chimney was crumbling and old. I'm just going to add some glue to it, glue it to the house, which I took down later and then fixed it up a little better and added back on. I found some heavenly bamboo uh, flowering twigs in my yard, so they were perfect for the trees. I just broke them down to what I wanted and just started adding them into the diorama. And after I put them all in, I glued them all down. Time for dirt. So I just do small sections, put some Mod Podge mat down, and then sprinkle my dirt onto it, and then shake off the excess. Any bare spots, I'll just fill in later. And then I will use some watered down Mod Podge, and I will seal everything in with a layer of it over, and it comes out nice and hard when you're done. I somehow forgot to film the static grass application, but you can see that on my other videos if you're interested. I'm just going to go ahead and start adding little larger tufts of grass one by one in different areas and start adding the sticks from the trees that I tore off earlier all around in different places. I bought some cattails in the miniature section, but I realized the cattails hadn't bloomed yet for the time of the year my diorama is. So I just cut off the foliage and put that on instead. As you can see, I'm just adding lots of sticks all over. This will all be covered with resin. I've used white glue and I put it around the edges of foam and put my plexiglass up against it and then hot glued all those pieces together. And that will hold all my resin in and make the sides look nice and smooth when I take it off and it's dry. I'm putting on my gloves and I'm going to mix my resin. The yellow, yellower one is a uh, hardener and the clear one, which I'm pouring right now, is the resin. So I'll pour that up to about that part there. And I used uh, a paper towel soaked in rubbing alcohol to use as cleanup. So I'll wipe my edges off so I don't have any goo running down there. And one of these containers will last about a year. Anything uh, older than that, you'll get more yellow and more flakes in it. So just to let you know. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and pour the hardener and I like to pour just a hair more of the hardener than of the resin because I know that way, even if I mess up, it will still work. I have had resin, or resin fail on me before, so I've learned this method and it seems to work well for me. I should probably get a scale and that would help for measuring a little easier. So I'm gonna first pour the hardener into the resin and get it all out with a wooden stick and then I will continuously stir this for about a minute and a half in more of a figure eight uh, format and by scraping the edges and sides and the bottom often to mix in with the rest of it. And I pour it back into the original hardener cup and once again I will stir that for approximately a minute to a minute and a half. It will look a little cloudy so what I'm trying to do is get it into a nice clear look and uh, if you over stir this vigorously you'll get more bubbles so gentle stirring will keep the bubbles down. To color my swamp resin I am going to use some oil paint. I use three dabs of French ultramarine and one dab of burnt sienna and mix it in there and I use that through each resin mixture pour that I had to do to keep the color consistent. And since I couldn't use a torch to take the bubbles out on the diorama, I used a straw to blow them out the best way I can. But you can buy a vacuum machine that sucks the bubbles out before you pour it in. And I tried making my own with my shop vac in a bucket, 
and it actually kind of worked. So that's a little something you can try at home pretty easily if you wanted to work with resin. So I'm working on my first pour and here is the second pour. I let the first pour dry for 24 hours and then went ahead and redid everything I did before, pour the second layer. And I actually thought I was going to need four, but I ended up only doing three layers of resin in this project. With the last layer poured, I let it sit for about an hour, hour and a half, and I go ahead and push in a couple floating logs around my swamp. 24 hours later and the resin is cured, I'm going to go ahead and pull my plexiglass off. It just pops right off pretty easily. I was actually a surprise, even though I've done this several times, at how well that came off. And look at how nice and shiny that looks and clear. Now, there will be little edges around where the plexiglass is because the resin sinks a little bit. So I will take a sharp knife to the edges and start to clean them up and uh, make them all even and a little bit more level with the rest of the swamp. When I add the Mod Podge gloss, it will cover up any imperfections that the knife might leave. And since I just recently learned how to use LEDs, I need a light in here too. So I've just got it all set up with the switch and uh, set that in there so it's ready to go. I drilled a hole right through the middle of everything and put the wire up through and I'm just going to leave the light about shoulder height if a person was standing in inside the building. Here's my roof. I bought some paper that looked cardboard like, had that corrugated effect. You can use cardboard for this too. I painted the underside black and I'm starting to add just a dark brown and a uh, burnt sienna color and some oranges to make this look old. At this point, and I added some blacks too, at this point I felt this was pretty red, so I will come in a little bit later and add some watered down gray to it. I'm making the top a little part just out of a piece of packaging, a little bit of thin cardboard, and I glued that on, let that sit and dry, and paint that up to it accordingly to the rest of the roof. I thought I would try to mix Mod Podge gloss with some green paint to use as the duckweed for the top of the swamp. So I just did a little test area. I'm going to let that dry and get back to some other parts of it. I've taken some dried leaves, crushed them up in tiny, tiny little pieces, and I'm just going to slowly start adding them to the roof. Pretty much by the time I got to the end of this, I was just pouring glue on and sprinkling the leaves all over. But this is how you start slowly, not sure what you're going to do. If you have a picture to go by, it helps. So then I realized that swamp uh, paint job didn't didn't work well so I used my coarse turf and Mod Podge gloss and used that and put it on and this uh, paint came off really easy it didn't cause any issues so I just scraped it off with my fingernail. My squeaky chair likes to say hello every so often. <laughs> so I just mixed the coarse turf and the Mod Podge gloss in a little container uh, made it kind of a little watery down and uh, placed it right onto the swamp diorama and pressed it in in little patterns. I did little areas at a time and just kept going around till uh, it looked good. So you can see some areas already dry, some areas in different stages of drying. I like it, it looks pretty good. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and take that watered down gray acrylic that I talked about earlier and put it right onto the roof and uh, that really kind of actually makes it look a little bit better and tones down those browns and those red tones. Now using the same coarse turf that I use for the duckweed on swamp water, I'm going to use that as my moss too. And I'm just using that Mod Podge mat and just hand placing them on there to where I feel like it should be. This is my northern side of the building. It should have more moss, but it has more of a pitch. So I felt like kind of a little bit the same on both sides. And the front had a lot more of a better slope. So I was able to put a lot more leaves and sticks onto that, making them seem like they had a nice place to sit. Well, it looks so pretty good so far, you guys. I'm I'm really excited about this project. This is one of my favorites. You can see a bubble line there from the layers, but as I get better, I will learn ways to perfect that. 
but what I'm doing right now is learning something new and that's what's important if you can't be perfect you can at least try of what you have and what you can do so yes this is the finished project um, I did add a little bit more grass turfs into the grass and I wrote my name on a little board and hid it away on the hill there and I just feel like this is a great addition to my abandoned USA diecast diorama set. And one thing I didn't show you is I did put curtains in the windows. I just used my paper towels from wiping my dirty paintbrushes on and that gave a nice little effect in it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.